G'day mate, welcome back to Factorio with me, Jedi. So, quick recap of last episode. Last episode, we went and dealt with the neighbours up here. We, um, we, we gave them an overdose of friendship pellets, and now they're no longer demanding more friendship pellets because they had a, a small overdosing, so therefore, they're dealt with. We don't, no longer have attacks coming from up there. Now, in saying that, we did leave the worms, but we're lucky enough that the radar just worked and showed us the spawners. So... We removed the spawners, so we don't have new biters spawning, we don't have new biters coming down and attacking. The worms are left there as a later Jedi problem. Jedi, Jedi is, well, I'm more than happy to have later problems that I'll go deal with later. At the same time, we did expand our smelting, so we went from a single half line of both iron and copper to two dedicated lines of iron, one dedicated line of copper, another, like, possibly a few lines here, um, but, you know, future plans, future expansion. This episode, I want to do a couple of things. So the first thing I want to do is I want to continue and expand our our bus structure out and continue uh, expanding base. At the same time, I want to cut off the iron that we're feeding into this smelter because we want to swap this top smelter over to making bricks. But I do want to make sure that this uh, assembly keeps running from our jump starter base. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this iron line and I'm going to park it in after I grab more belt. Park it in here, and at the same time, we're gonna uncap that to that, because I know I'm gonna need a whole lot more inserters shortly. So the idea of this is that as the iron ore feeds through, gets smelted, comes out of the smelters, goes on this line, eventually this line right here is gonna stop running. And when it does, we're gonna side load in this line of iron. So if I just absorb all the iron for a second, we can see exactly how this is gonna work. So we're gonna feed in our excess iron, and that should keep this running. So at the same time, we need to sort of try and decide where we're going to put our bus. Now, ideally, I'd like four lanes of iron and four lanes of copper. We can see from our starting patch being 310,000 iron and 209,000 copper and the little bit of coal we've got, that's not going to last. Like, we need to go find more iron, more copper. At the same time, our next couple of researches, which I will want to add, I did go in and I did enable the research queue. So... I should have done it when I was first creating the map. There's a couple of things I should have done, but I didn't do them, but that's fine. So I did forget to enable the research queue. On top of that, I did want to... Uh, I did install a mod. So we both, we all know Factory at Night is very, very dark. I installed inbuilt lighting. Now, inbuilt lighting basically puts a small light inside every single power pole and it just brings up the ambient lighting in the background wherever i put down power poles which is pretty much the whole base um so yeah it was something I, after seeing the first few episodes going up and remembering how bad uh youtube compression removes any light that is in the map i thought look let's do this it's it's more important that people see than we get a hundred percent vanilla experience so um just a one little quality of my life mod there so at the same time uh research queue so the other reason i installed research queue is it means we can bring up research and i can talk through the next couple of researches rather than it popping up annoyingly when we're in the middle of talking about something else and then we could just let the research continue in the background and then move on with something else. So, research-wise, first thing I want to grab is military. Main reason is we get our armor-piercing friendship pellets along with grenades. Grenades are very, very handy at killing off, uh, killing off, um, removing the uh, cockroach infestation on the natural planet. Uh, at the same time, they're very, very good at killing trees and we have a bit of a forest we're going to have to dig through our way through. So, grenades wouldn't hurt. At the same time, I'm going to grab the tool belt. Tool belt just gives you an extra 10 inventory slots it's basically another row of your inventory can't argue with that at the same time that's really all the ones we desperately need we're going to grab military science pack because that's going to be our next science pack we're going to need anyway at the same time i'm going to add in physical projectile damage too um it is going to take a little while being 200 packs but the best thing about factor is if we just resume science for a little bit and then bring this back up if i cancel all those and we go back to military two we can see it's already got four percent researched so we can actually resume things right from where they are so if my priorities change and suddenly we need like bigger and better power poles or something like that we can just cancel the research and bring it back up so we're going to tag these back in and that's going to be next on our list too Okay, so we're going to let research go. So with that said, we need to start, as they're planning out our bus. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to imagine, it's not like that currently, but we're going to imagine that we've got four lanes of iron, 
And then this one down here is our first copper lane. Now I can always route the next lane of copper down here. It's probably something we, we might consider doing. Uh, actually, how hard is that to do right now? Well, I'd have to build out the whole smelter block. We're not doing that right now. So what I want to do is I want to imagine that we're going to start our bus down here. So if this is our line, our first line of copper, I want a four line gap. And then we're going to do a line of iron. And this comes back to the basics of how to do a bus. Now, we'll, we'll link uh, up to a video at the top right hand corner of how a... That's wrong. You've got to go out to there. Mm. Yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll fix things up later. So yeah, I will link to um, how to make a bus up in the top right hand corner. It's a video that sort of outlines how a bus works. Um, and what makes a bus a bus and why a lot of people build things on a bus. The reason we're choosing a bus is purely because it's the easiest for me to explain. And that's really the only reason, to be honest. So once we've got our iron down here, um, the first thing we need to do is we need to start planning. So um, we're going to link again to my tile level blueprints. And first thing we're going to want on our bus is come on game there we go we're gonna want gears and i'm gonna start building them about here that should be more than enough so the idea of gears first is it's one of those intermediates we're using a lot of and i want to get them built and then get them on the bus at which point hang on let's just fill out this actually we can fill it out with ghosts so four lanes of copper four lanes of iron uh, we get this in and placed. We'll get the power poles in and placed. So yeah, gears are one of those intermediates you use a lot of, and a lot, a lot of. So I recommend, and that's why I made a blueprint for it, that you put gears on the bus. Uh, it also means later on when we get to moduling and uh, all those sorts of fun things that it means rather than having several small gear builds all around your base, you just have one that you have to worry about. So yeah. Um, one of the reasons, like I said, I put gears on the main bus. Uh, you have too many power poles. There you go. Version 1.1 or 1.2 or whatever version we're up to. Uh, you'll find linked on my Discord when I update the blueprint because that's what happens with these things. Um, as you play through different, as you play through the game, you'll end up realizing that you made boo-boos in the past and need to update the blueprints. Uh, okay, so we want to have an underground there to underground our copper line. And then link that in there. So one of the other thing, main things about how a bus works is if we have an output already right on that one, which we copy and paste to there, and I just remove all this really quickly, you can see that all my iron's going down here. The catch is I also want iron on this first lane. So one of the things I do on my particular bases is I put in a second splitter here, and its idea is, hang on, I'm going to clear off some serious amounts of iron. The idea of this is, it's not long enough. Let's make it longer so we can see what's happening. Remove all that, remove all that, remove this. As you can see, it's pulling off a whole belt of iron and then it's using what is on the second belt to bring it down to the first belt. And that's how this works. Um, it's what I refer to as a reverse waterfall, um, a reverse waterfall split off. Uh, hang on, we go there, there, there. Jed is trying to think at all at the same time. It's not working out well. So, it's something I do to rebalance my belts. Rather than putting in belt balancer after belt balancer after belt balancer, it just simplifies the process to a certain extent. Okay, so we have a forest we're going to have to dig through. At the same time, I am going to have to look at some sort of automated defenses because... Yes, there's there's neighbors here and neighbors here. As for our pollution cloud, it's on these guys. This is why we have a, a couple of attacks coming in here constantly. And thankfully it hasn't reached these guys yet, but it's it's on its way. Okay, so next thing I want to grab from our blueprints is green circuits, which means you have to move and you have to move. And green circuits are a massive build. Uh, and honestly, I think two is going to be all we need to start with. So... Green circuits require copper, so that means I need to get that very first copper belt and bring it down here. At the same time, whilst I'm up here at the base, we need to do a quick inventory resupply. Uh, okay, we're going to want uh, inserters, belts, uh, assembly machines, guns. I don't need guns. 
Let's grab half the guns just in case. I've got a lot of iron in my inventory. Uh, I'll grab some ammo. Oh, we got some extra science packs, which I will just dump in there, out of the way. Uh, radar, we'll put a radar as low as we can to give us some exploration. All right, so power first. Power first, because power is easy. And as we've covered already, uh, actually, that power pole doesn't need to be there. There you go. Again, version 1.1 of Blueprints you'll find on Discord. Because uh, they do get updated with small things like this where you found you got an extra power pole that you don't technically need. So that goes away, that goes away. So, green circuits. Again, something I strongly recommend you have on the bus. It's one of those intermediates you're going to go through a lot of. Uh, also, as Factoria continues, there is green circuits being electronic circuits, these ones. And then finally you have... Red circuits being advanced circuits, yes, uh, which require these ones. And then at the same time, we have processing units, which require these ones and the previous ones. So, yeah, you're, you're going to end up going through a lot of circuits in this game. It's one of the reasons why this particular build is slightly, I, I, I call it overbuilt. Um, at least for our purposes right now, but it's really designed to be able to take you through to late game. So the way this build works is we have this first belt, which outputs and side loads into this belt. Then these splitters can then balance between these two lanes, and then this splitter can balance between these two lanes. And the idea is this will fill up four full lanes of green circuits if you build it long enough. Um, we can go to the blueprint details here and we can see once upgraded to tier 2 20 cable machines can be supported blah 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 produces 42 green chips per two copper lines okay so it has a limitation with our current tech but as our tech upgrades we can obviously push that limitation up higher and you get a lot more green circuits out of this build consequently it is designed to as i said uh take you potentially through to late game if you feed enough materials in and you make the build long enough to, to run the amount of materials you have in. Okay, next thing I wanna do, just because it's easy to build it this way, is we're gonna lay in all the straight belt. Not even gonna worry about it. And then we're gonna grab our splitters, which I definitely did not handcraft enough of. And we're gonna lay them in one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, next off is this belt, which is actually the iron in. Uh, there to there to there. I lay that belt in, lay that belt in. That goes up to our iron, which looks again like one of those. We output probably right, so we tag that in there. We're gonna have a second one here. Uh, and actually now we can see the so as we can see this belt is absolutely empty if i put in a second one here we can see that all this iron gets pushed down to this belt and then continues down so this is why i build it the way i do uh, i i split off the main bus the way i do uh okay that goes to there we need you uh we need you one belt too many. Okay, that's done, that's done, that's done. We need to get... Okay, so you come along to there. We're going to run out of undergrounds. <sighs> okay, unfortunately, copper... Let's put copper on the bottom line just to make our life a little bit easier when it comes to splitting things off. So we're going to put a... Split it there, uh, priority right, and then underground that. Uh, here we need to underground from there to there, then from there to there. Uh, same story here, there, there, oops, there to there. And output priority right on that one, tag that into there, and that'll start our green circuit production running. So. We have one lane of belts, which obviously that has to underground to get out of the way. And as I said, this is designed to put out four belts. Now, because one, I don't have the resources. Two, I didn't foreplan enough, well enough to have enough space. What we're actually going to do is I'm just going to run three belts of this out. Which means 
potentially, I'm causing a problem for myself later on in the game where I could do with a fourth belt. And I could upgrade this production fast enough to get a fourth belt, but I don't have a fourth belt. Uh, and we'll call that a later JD problem. Um, I'm pretty sure that's where we're going to leave that, actually. That one should be there instead. Now, another thing you might notice is we have some extra green circuits sitting here at the end. So what you can do is you can filter, say, fish on the right-hand side. And if I clear those off, it means only fish can go to the right-hand side, which means rather having this extra couple of green circuits sitting here at the end of the splitter, they have to be forced out to left-hand side to then go down the bus. So... Again, entirely up to you. This is something that some people love doing, some people hate doing, um, some people hate the look of fish. Fish is something that I use, uh, only because the chance of you having fish on a bus is pretty slim. But, you know, there's lots of options for what you can put on there to, to block a belt, basically. I've seen a lot of people use uh, blueprints, like red. Red's a good one. Just copy that to there, copy that to there, copy that to there. That way you know it's a non-line. So, yeah, there are options. All right, next thing we're going to do is continue our bus through. And hang on. Uh, I have any coal on me. Of course I don't have coal. Because in, only in Factorial Land, if you take iron, you take coal, and you rub the two together, you get a grenade that explodes on impact. Don't know. Don't ask me. This is how it works. Uh, okay. So, as you can see, we're going to have a small problem with cliffs in the middle of our bus. Now, later on, we're going to have chemical science. Chemical science will give us the technology to put down some um, uh, some cliff explosives, which will remove cliffs. Cliffs are the ultimate defense. The only things that will take them out are... Um, wrong button. The only things that will take them out are cliff explosives and nuclear weapons. They are pretty much impenetrable, which is why we have been using them in our base currently as natural defenses. And we'll probably keep using them as natural defenses for a little while at least. Okay, set up some guns to cover us at least. So let's go find some coal. Because I'd really like I'd really like them to go away and I really don't want to chop them down manually one by one. Good news is we have a whole coal line right here. Uh, throw the copper away. Throw the iron ore back into smelters. Handcraft ourselves 22 grenades. Sounds like a good number. And then, oh, we've got an attack coming in the north. And you guys are pathing around to here. Uh, don't you dare take out that gun. Okay, obviously we need a few more guns. Uh, I did it again. Come on, game. Yeah, don't try and put fish in there. Put ammo in there. One, two. One, two. That's better. Okay. That's that solved. That's that solved. I can't decommission this till I get copper fed in there, which I don't want to do just current uh, just yet. Uh, I want to talk to the trees. One at a time. Well, actually quite a few at a time. So... You're not some sort of linebacker, you're not some sort of baseball pitcher, you're a fairly normal engineer, and as we can see, consequently, this green range is how far you can throw a grenade. What you want to do is sort of what I aim halfway between you and the end of the green range, and you want to aim to the thickest part of the trees. If you click twice, the whole forest goes away. Um, really, really handy for getting rid of piles of trees. You can get further research. Uh, stronger Explosives 1, 2, and I think you need 3 as well. Once you get to Stronger Explosives 3, uh, trees go away in one click, which we love. So, with that done, we've got a little bit of more room. We can clear out a few more trees. Uh, okay. That's going to come back to haunt me. All right. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to work around the natural environment, uh, which means we're going to need to underground. Oh, we'll leave that one for the moment. We're going to have to underground actually just the top two lanes. The rest sort of managed to fit through without an issue. All right. Excellent. So we're going to have gears, uh, green circuits, iron copper, drag all these along. Next one I really want is Jetty's Workshop. 
which means the guns I just put down are now in my way. Alright, so... JD's Workshop. JD's Workshop is a masterpiece of construction. Uh, it's giant, it's massive, but it's what I refer to as, as in my workshop, it makes everything you might need in the game to get you from start to end, um, all the things that we've been having up here currently. So all the belts, all the assemblers, all those sorts of things. And again, I'll link to the video. It's, it's sort of fairly involved to build. Um, and it's going to take me some time to get up and running. And worse than that, the iron comes in here and that's behind all those undergrounds. Uh, cool. So we're going to have to wiggle this this way. And then underground. Where's our copper? Our copper's all the way up there, actually. Nope. There. So yeah, it's, it's a fairly complicated build um this is why i did a whole video on exactly how this guy works uh and i strongly recommend if you're looking at if you're looking at some sort of workshop like this have a look at the video i'm gonna do my best to explain it right now but like i said it, it took a 20 minute video to go through and explain how this what this does and how it does it so um first step with most blueprints is uh chop down all the damn trees uh, and then lay in the, the power poles. Power poles are just one of those things that if you get them all laid out quickly, uh, you can then not have to worry about them, uh, not worry about them placing the wrong area further along. As you can see, it's a, quite a lengthy build. In fact, it's going to get very, very close to the neighbors. All right. So we only need to get about half this built to start with. So again, power pole, we're going to decide this is as far as we're going to build it for right now. Power pole, power pole, power pole, power pole, power pole, power pole. Yeah, there's there's a few. Oop. Yeah, pick up that. There's a few power poles that need to be placed. Uh, that one, that one, that one, that one. There's a few trees that didn't get the message the first time around. There's another one. Oh, uh, that doesn't need to be there. That needs to be there. That needs to be there. Okay, so like I said, this is a a a, a warehouse, a, a make most things, a make everything. Um, it's it's designed to make all the things I've been handcrafting. So we've got belt, obviously, but also we've got undergrounds and splitters. So let's actually get the splitters up and running. We know we need green belt, uh, green circuits in here. So again, we'll run that along there, that along there. Have you do an output priority right? Which I probably didn't set on that one. Nope. So, we're going to bring in green circuits, and the other thing we're going to need is gears. Unfortunately, due to poor planning on the planning department, uh, I technically need two belts of gears, and we've only made one belt of gears. So, we're going to... And we've also got it... It's, it's in our green circuit belt, so we're going to have to work our way around things a little bit. Uh, okay, so that's going to then underground, actually let's just underground that out of our way, bring that down to there, this is our second gear belt, which again, same story, we're just going to underground those out of the way, put that in there, run that to there, uh, actually let's just put them at maximum distance. Okay, so we're going to have two belts of gears. Uh, make more undergrounds. Alright, first things first. So, we need belts. Okay, belts need iron and gears. So, a couple of inserters later, we've got iron and gears. Great. Next, we want undergrounds. Undergrounds require... Oh, no, underground splitters. Splitters require... Uh, after we put the assembler in place, they require iron. That's easy, it's right there. It also requires uh, that inserter not to be there. There you go, I've already found something we can remove. Uh, also requires green circuits, and it requires belts. We're going to make a long-handed inserter to take belts from this machine, put them in that machine. Next up we have is uh, undergrounds. Undergrounds require iron, and they require gears. Again, I found an extra inserter that's not doing anything so we've got that one that one automated next thing i want to do is i want to have them output uh and then 
we put down these little chests, you can see that there's a red wire that goes from here to here. Now, I don't have the technology for this yet. It's actually all the, all the way over here. I haven't researched it, but because it's part of a blueprint, we magically get the wire and it magically hooks up. And the idea is that this wire has hooked this inserter to this box and it said, hey, once we get 100 in the box, stop outputting. So that one's set to 100, that one's set to 2000, that one's set to 100. And the idea is that we can come along here and we're going to have 100 undergrounds, 100 splitters and 2000 belts should we need it. So with that out of the way, next thing we want to build down to is going to be uh, Inserterville. Insertaville, as you can see, has a number of inserters it makes. So we're going to bring that belt up. So we have yellow inserter, red inserter, blue inserter, uh, mining drills, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, we need undergrounds. Oh, look, we've got a whole box of them full now. Uh, so underground from there to there, underground from there to there, uh, underground from there to there, underground from there to there. Okay, so we need basic inserters. Basic inserters require iron plate. That is that inserter. It requires gears. We're going to pull it off that belt and that belt. Should one of the belts be short, hopefully the other belt has uh, gears on it. On top of that, we're going to have two longhand inserters for the electronic circuits. It's a little bit of overkill, but by the same token, it doesn't really hurt to have a little bit extra. Uh, next thing we need is steel chests, because as we can see, these ones are started with grammar steel. That's going to become important, very important later on. Uh, hopefully these are artificially capped. Yes, they are. So we're going to put down an inserter there. So we're, now we're making plain old inserters. Fast inserters. Fast inserters need normal inserters. Again, long-handed to move from there to there. Also require... Uh, turns out they don't require gears. We just saved ourselves another inserter. They require iron. They require green circuits, which we're going to bring in from here. And again, they're going to output to there. Again, the chest is capped. So we're going to start making fast inserters. Great. Last one we have is longhand inserters, which require iron, they require gears, and they require output, along with the longhand inserter to take them from there to there. So we've got another another one of the things that we've been handcrafting, done and dusted and out of the way. Next off, we have assembly machines, which obviously I need that belt hooked up, and that belt hooked up, and from the looks of all these inserters, this belt hooked up, and that's mining drills. No idea what's further down here. So uh, let's go with uh, assembly machines first. So assembly machines require iron, which is that inserter. They also require electronic circuits, which looks like it's that belt. I would assume yes. Uh, yep, it's that longhand inserter. And finally, it requires an iron chest. Again, it's an iron chest, not a steel chest. It does make a difference. And as you can see, it has one of these little invisible uh, red wires on there. If we hook that in there, we can see it's got its own sparks. It's set to 100. So it, this is going to stock 100 assembly machines in this chest. Uh, next off, we have miners. Miners are gears on the left, gears on the right. Output, input of iron, input of uh, electronic circuits, and a steel chest has no no wire on it and it looks like it's not capped because i'm not rich like this chest will hold two and a half thousand or two thousand four hundred electric miners honestly you're going to use two and a half four two point four thousand eventually over the course of the game i'm not rich enough to do that yet so i'm going to cap it to like 200 200 is enough for right now uh further down here oh we have guns yeah we're gonna want guns okay so again hook up belts Looks like that's not important. That looks like that's important. Uh, okay, put in that underground, that splitter, that belt. That goes to there. We can see that gears have made it down on the left-hand side, but have not made it anywhere on the right-hand side. So this is why a lot of assemblies... Uh, pull gears from arm. Oh, it's not made it because somebody didn't put a underground in place. It was just a ghost one. But yes, this is why you can see a lot of these assemblies pull in gears from both sides wherever possible in case one belt is full and one belt is empty. Okay, so this is our copper belt which we need to drag up to copper and one of them goes in there. Copy, paste. Uh... And, ooh, bad. Okay, so we need more undergrounds, more splitters. Undergrounds are there, and splitters are there. I'm only grabbing a half a stack out of the box at a time because I don't think I need more than that on me currently. 
just do a little bit more forest cleaning whilst we're here. And we can then drag the belts forth. Uh, bring that up to there. Grab our iron belt belts that we left all the way back there. Make we make sure we put that splitter in pay, in place. Okay. Oh, technically we need the same on green circuit. So one, two, three, and then just copy and drag right across. All right. So copper belt, which we're going to run through this uh, underground underneath the pipes down to here. Oh crap, that was a splitter. All right, which we need un uh, splitters, uh, that long hand inserters for. Uh, okay, so let's start adding to my list. So I want to have long handed there, blue inserters, definitely want some of those. All right. Gonna put that on there, that on there, and that on there. That is capped to two stacks. That seems like heaps. Uh, that's repair packs. Repair packs could probably be helpful. Uh, which requires that belt hooked up, that and that and that. Uh, repair packs stack at 100. That's one, two, three, 400. 400 might be a little bit excessive for where our base is currently. And that's as far as we can build this blueprint with right what we've got in the way of our, our current tech. Now, the best part about this blueprint is it comes in stages. So we have the starter build, number one. We have automation and logistics. And the idea of this blueprint is after you've finished all the red and green technology, you can unlock everything in this blueprint. So I'm gonna paste this on top and see if any extra machines unlocked. Pipes, pipes have completely unlocked. So we're gonna continue our builds through because we are going to need pipes in the upcoming future. Uh, pipe, pipe, pipe. Okay, so we're going to continue that through. There's our last of our tech. Okay, so um, we've got... Okay, we're going to go for that research. I don't have military unlock uh, built yet, so I'm not going to start on something that is potentially military science. So let's go for... We need to get to oil processing. Uh, that much I know. So we're going to go for engines... Uh, because it's on our list, basically. Also, it's one of the requirements for chemical science. On top of that, there is the Automation 2, which unlocks the Assembly Machine Mark 2, which has a crafting speed of 0.75 compared to our 0.5 that we've got currently. So we're going to add that to our list, and we're also going to do fluid handling. That's where we're going to leave that for now. And then I just want to get pipes done. Uh, turns out I'm out of steel chests. Okay, so we have pipes being made. They're going to a box with a lot of them. We have our underground pipes being made, which as you can see has a requirement of pipes. So we've got this pipe machine that's putting them over here to then make underground pipes. It does require a lot of underground, a lot of normal pipes to make an underground pipe. So it's gonna be fairly slow, but again, it's got a big buffer. So it should buffer up eventually. And I think with that, that's all the tech unlocks so far. There's other odds and ends here, down here, like this one all the way down here is steel chests. We obviously don't have steel chests because we don't have steel currently, at least no no automated steel. We've got a little bit of steel we made early on and that's about as far as we go. But we have our workshop up and running. We're gonna put in some temporary defenses because at the moment we are dealing with a lot of temporary defenses. Uh, here, 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 and here. Uh, ammo. And with that, I think that's where we're going to la leave this episode. We've we've got a good amount... Oops. Good amount up and running. We have a lot of things up and running. We don't have any... So we've basically put down... We've put down gear automation. We've put down our electronic circuits automation, okay? We've built out a part of the workshop, not all of the workshop, but a significant amount of the workshop, which means going through our list here, we can replace green circuits. This can go. We can replace belts and inserters. That can go. It's still fitting green science, but that's okay. We can build a dedicated green science build in the next episode. We can replace assembly machines. We can replace miners. We can replace guns. So they're all the things that need copper apart from red science. So we're at the point where we can replace all of this except for the ammo production. But I could put ammo production anywhere off the iron line temporarily 
or we could rush and get up to military science. Once we've got military science, it's going to make ammo for us. So with that said, we've made a good progress this episode. Uh, we have got our very sort of early bus in and running. We do need to clean it up later when we get cliff explosives and we get rid of the cliff in the middle. Um, at the same time, ooh, we should probably look at putting a gun here and here because I removed both those. Uh, yeah, that seems logical, JD. Um, so in the upcoming episodes, we're going to have to probably do something about these guys because they're definitely absorbing pollution. Uh, oh, there's another one up there. This is why we've got an attack coming down this side. Yes, they're choosing to go to the right side of the lake rather than the left side of the lake. Uh, power is not maxed out, I'm surprised. So we're doing all right with power. So yeah, next episode, definitely, we're going to get some red science up and running, some green science up and running. Uh, probably expand into military tech and eventually definitely come conquer some more iron and some more copper um because 3.3 million is a lot better than 280k which is very quickly disappearing in fact that i can already tell it's not a full lane of iron ore going in so it's not going to be a full lane of iron plate coming out in fact some of these smelters are out of iron ore completely so we do need to look at expanding um copper's okay at the moment we're not using a lot of it but we're also going to need a steel smelter in the not too distant future which again is going to be more iron a lot more iron so with all that said thank you guys so much for watching do hope you enjoyed i'll see you guys next episode yeah where we expand out future uh, further deal with a few more natives and take it from there so with all that said thank you guys as i said for watching i'll see you in the next one all right bye <music>